Well, first of all, our work uh, is the result of a joint uh, cooperation with the European Patent Office and UNEP, the Environmental uh, United Nations uh, program. Uh, what we try to do is to select some technologies that we thought that were more relevant to try to tackle the problems of uh, mitigation in the area of climate change. And we selected a number of technologies and the work that we did was on clean energy technologies. And in that particular area, the, the patent landscapes uh, indicate that uh, today, uh, as it happens in most of the areas of patenting, uh, patenting is basically dominated by six uh, major countries uh, in the area of clean energy technology. I'm talking about uh, Japan. Japan is the first, uh, then the United States, uh, Germany, France, uh, Republic of Korea, and the UK. Um, this is something that we try to pay attention to, to see what is the role of some emerging economies. And no doubt that there are some emerging economies, particularly China, India, and in some respect Brazil in some areas like uh, biofuels, uh, that are playing a role, also, also Mexico. And then Russia is not a developing country, but appears to be an emerging economy, also shows some activity in the area of clean energy technology. But to sum up, the, the landscape is clear in the sense that 80% uh, is basically dominated by the traditional patenting countries uh, worldwide. Huh? And what do you think is the problem with that? The problem... Well, the, this is one of the issues in general that uh, the developing country has been raising in the sense that the system is uh, not necessarily symmetric. And then uh, in order for the countries uh, from the south to develop, you need to have access to technology. The issue is how you get access. It's not an easy question. And I think the whole debate in the climate change, uh, climate change negotiation has been really focused on how to improve access, how to improve um, the negotiating conditions of licensing agreements. That is one of the market-based uh, instruments to really transfer technology. That, uh, and this has come out, come out, come out of the, our study, that is basically also focused in most of the developed country and only a minor proportion goes to some of the emerging economies. Uh, basically, again, Brazil, uh, in a way, South Africa, China, no doubt, India. Uh, these are the, the big exchanges that are happening with all those countries. Then most of the other countries, and I think that's the major issue, is how you could improve conditions that those countries could have access if they're going to tackle the, the major problems that they face in the area of climate change. What are the problems with the technology mechanism? Well, the technology mechanism is a creation that uh, well, was approved in principle when the Copenhagen conference took place in 2009. There was some consensus that you needed to, de to do something for the developing country. And one of the ways, and I think one, one of the problems that has been um, present in the whole discussions of the, since uh, the Rio conference in 2002 has been the relationship between uh, intellectual property and climate change technology. How is it an obstacle, is a problem, is the solution? And there is, has been no agreement on that. The developed country, they insist that IP is fundamental. Some of the developing country, they see or they consider, they perceive that it's an obstacle, then in a way uh, a neutral solution has been to create something, uh, not to tackle the problem, but to say, well, we will create an institution. I'm afraid that this might become a, bureaucrat a bureaucratic institution and not solve the real problems. One of the issues that comes out from our study is that there should be more transparency uh, in the area of information and transparency in the area of patent has been an issue all the time. And I think uh, traditionally the system is rather opaque. There is not much information around what exists, what is available.
because in the area of clean energy technology compared to other areas uh, like uh, the pharmaceutical area in clean energy technology you could have a, a range of technology most of them and a number of them that probably they're not patented today or the patent has expired then there are possibilities potential possibility to have access but it's not so easy you need also to have the know-how to work that particular invention it's not just that the patent expired that you could just copy and use it um, a contribution that we made with our study and uh, this is one of the results of the work is that uh, the European Patent Office has created a new classification scheme for clean energy technologies then and this is a public good is available and uh, if people want to know what are the patented technology in the, in the clean energy area um, is easy to have access to then uh, those countries that are in conditions of negotiating an agreement they could know who, who are the owners who's what is the technology what are the merits of that technology then we have there is a lot that has been done in recent years I, I take a positive attitude and information is crucial in order to to facilitate access to technology but and I come back to, to what I feel is a substantive um, fundamental question Th that patent is basically a market uh, a, a market instrument and not all countries in the developing world they could ha they could have access to that especially more vulnerable countries poor countries uh, patents might, might not work for them then you need to create uh, other incentive you need to create other instruments and i hope that the technology mechanism in a way could respond to that by facilitating information making available there are a number of discussions going on on a number of other instruments uh, on how you could facilitate access to technology there has been a lot of discussion within the patent system how you could improve uh, lic uh, compulsory licensing compulsory licensing is something that is not uh, like uh, by by private firms some people say that this is a sort of expropriation but this is an accepted principle that you could have if the patent is not used or for a number of other considerations you could uh, uh, claim uh, a compulsory licensing that will be granted by the authority against remuneration that is one avenue but it's not the only one it might not work in all cases but um, in the area of pharmaceuticals there are some examples of uh, uh, patent pooling that you put together in one scheme or another uh, patents on in this case on clean energy technology that maybe countries that need to have access they could negotiate better terms or there could be grants that could be given in order to facilitate the acquisition of those technologies. For a number of countries in the developing world um, patents is not a solution because uh, if the patent system has worked in the in the developed world because the patent system me became more mature when in those countries like in the UK, in France, in the United States, you, ha you had a technological and a scientific base. You have companies that could participate, you got firms that could participate in the system, that they could in they innovate, they, they, they buy patents, they sell patents. In um, the system doesn't work like that in most of the developing countries where they don't have that uh, fundamental base, they don't have capacity to innovate, then you need to start from, from scratch.